STV, votre télé. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's edition of The Diary. So, marriage, an exciting thing to talk about, is it not? Well, especially when you're in love and you're planning to spend the rest of your life with that special person. And, uh, of course, you probably read books about love and marriage and you tell yourself you have a pretty good idea about what marriage is all about. Some people who are already married will tell you, prepare for good and bad. But while you convince yourself that your marriage is going to be different because no one has ever been in love the way you feel you're in love. So it's going to be uh, a perfect marriage. But, well, whether you like it or not, there are times when you'll be faced with ice cold realities what realities am i talking about well if you want to know you should stay tuned because it's what we'll be talking about in this edition of the diary well i'm not an expert on the subject no i'm not even married that's why i've brought together a very special group of married people to discuss this and break it all down for you you're going to meet them just after this transition don't go away <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching The Diary on STV, and this week we're talking all marriage. Yes, expectation versus reality. It's now time to meet the group of people who I have on, on set with me to discuss this very uh, important subject. I'm going to start with uh, the ladies. Well, lady for now. We'll be joined by a second one in, in just a matter of minutes. She's a very special guest. She's traveled all the way from Yaoundé to be here, and we are really very grateful. Uh, Martha Mononokombe. She's a marriage and relationship coach, which is why her presence today is really exceptional because she will know everything to tell us on the subject. She's also the founder of First Ladies Network. She's uh, an amazing caterer. It is so great to have you on the show, Mata. Finally. Finally, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we are happy. Thank you. The honor is all mine. Let me start by saying that egg roasted fish is today. Oh, <laughs> how I love Dwala. <laughs> oh, she's the caterer. She's always talking about food. <laughs> yes, Dwala is amazing. Well, uh, like I was saying, she's not the only lady on set uh, for for now, she's the only one, but we'll be joined very soon by uh, Sally Achufointama. She's on her way. She's beaten, battling traffic in Douala. It's not easy, but she'll be here uh, any minute with us. And I have uh, two gentlemen that I'm very, very glad to be having on the show. I'm going to start with Mr. Bu Nange Eric. He's a pedagogic advisor, but he's also the co-founder the co of um, uh, an association to help underprivileged children in a society. Hello, Mr. Eric. I'm really, very glad you could come to the show uh, this week. Thank you very much, Manda. And the, the reason why I'm really glad is I reached you pretty late. I reached you yesterday, sure. yeah. and you could still make time for us. Mm -hmm. We are we are so grateful. <laughs> Thank you very much. The pleasure is mine. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm glad to hear that. And uh, another very special guest um, I have to my left. He's one of my best friends, uh, uh, Ronald Taco. It's weird when you have to <laughs> introduce your friend <laughs> because you know them, <laughs> and you feel that everyone should just know them. Uh, Ronald, I'm really very glad you could be here. I'm going to add this. Uh, Ronald uh, works with the a very prestigious for Tabe University. He's also a trainer. He's trained uh, so many, more than 500 uh, corporate workers in Cameroon. How are you doing today? Doing good, and I'm happy to be here. Okay. Ronald is also, uh, what everyone has said, is a married person. I've said that Ronald has been married for six years. He might not look it. <laughs> yes, but he's been married for uh, six long years, and uh, I'm sure there's a lot we're going to be uh, learning from him. Now, let's dive straight into uh, uh, the topic, and I'd like us to start with the fairy tale part. You know, when uh, when is the dating stage, both people put their, their good foot forward, That's and true. it's looking all bright and shining. So, my first question for our subject today is what are some of the expectations that uh, people have vis-a-vis -vis their partner when they're getting married? I'm going to start with you, Martha. <laughs> Thank you very much for that question. 
you know, let me start with me, mm -hmm. the example. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Uh, a new marriage is going to be like, like you know, the, the, the feeling that you have when you're in love. Mm -hmm. You know, you've met the guy, you're all hot sea, and you're like, we're going to make it. Mm -hmm. So this, I had this image of, I've been married for 13 years. Oh, <laughs> yes, thank you for adding that. Thank you so much for adding that. I've been married for 13 years, and, and it's been a beautiful journey. I'll keep learning every day. But there yeah. is that, that fairy tale, that, think of, that thought of, this is going to be the best journey ever. Mm -hmm. We'll never have differences. He yeah. calls me his baby. I call him darling. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to flow. But then you get up one morning and mm -hmm. you realize that it's more real. Yeah. <laughs> this is the real real. <laughs> this is the real real. Mm -hmm. so, so I want to say all of us have that, that, that dream. Surely us the ladies, you know. Yeah. You know, during courtship, I have this feeling. I don't know, but I have this feeling that we, we, we try to put up ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, like, let me take an example. This morning when I got up, I had no makeup. Mm -hmm. You know, I was there with my kaba all night wear. That's mm -hmm. the reality. But by yeah. the time you're meeting your partner when you're dating, you need to put on good perfume you know. and everything. <laughs> you know, there's that stage performance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so marriage now comes and you see the reality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. So there's always that dream. Mm -hmm. There's always that dream that we have at the beginning. <laughs> all right. I see uh, Mr. Boo Eric. He's been smiling and nodding all this time. <laughs> so from a man's uh, perspective, what are the, some of those expectations you have when you're preparing to get married or when you just get married? Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, before I get into that, that, each time I think about marriage, mm -hmm. I think of the statement the celebrant of my own marriage some 14 years ago made wow. when okay. he was <laughs> so he's, he's, he's been married uh, the longest on set <laughs> noted <laughs> so when he was preaching he said marriage is an institution where everybody want to go yeah so just from the fact that everybody want to be there you can imagine what people imagine yeah that is right in there it <laughs> means the place is a world for everybody mm -hmm. a place where there is goal and marriage comes as a result of maybe you meet your partner or you are in love with somebody and you think okay fine let me just snatch mm -hmm. and let it be mine and mine alone yeah then you start <laughs> thinking that the only way to do it is to maybe let's seal it mm -hmm. let's seal it with marriage and we live together for forever that is to tell you that marriage before everybody and the way everybody conceives the idea is heaven. Until you get there, you will not know what is inside. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. That's from uh, a gentleman who's been married 14 years. Uh, Rune, you've been married half that time. <laughs> Are you still in that uh, dreamy fairy tale stage? Oh, <laughs> has that changed too for you? Of course. Uh, six years is not six days. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Now, when you. What you're saying is very true, expectation versus reality. The expectations mm -hmm. are usually quite different mm -hmm. from what we would ex what we meet in the marriage. Mm -hmm. Now, when you are still dating and you feel that, okay, you and your partner plan your resources the best way possible, mm -hmm. you understand yourself like nobody else in the world does, and you feel that you know your partner very well, you show your partner your good side and your bad side, mm -hmm. but um, in reality, that's just a dream. And just like my brother on the other side said, marriage is an institution that a lot of people are rushing into. But when people meet the realities, you find that a lot more people are rushing out. <laughs> so while some are rushing in, Ooh. you find a lot more people who are inside rushing, rushing out. out. And because when people are not married, they are so blissful. If you try to advise a young person not to get married, mm -hmm. you almost have issues with them. Yeah. So there's that um, imagination that we have, but that when we finally get married, a few months later, sometimes a month, six months later, the reality steps in. And you find that in many developed countries, mm -hmm. most couples... 50% or 60% of couples divorce before the end of their first year in marriage or they are not happy. Wow. Wow. So it shows that there's really that contrast between what they thought they would meet and what the reality is in marriage itself is. Okay, right. So we all agree. <laughs> we all agree on one thing. Um, expectation is not always reality sure. <laughs> in marriage. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, I would like for us to break it down into a small subs, yeah. uh, different areas. Now, l let's begin with, with love and attention. You know, when you're, you're dating, I mean, I would know that I'm still dating. <laughs> uh, you, sp you spend all your time together. You talk on the phone for long hours. You can just go on talking and talking and there's always something to talk about. But well, uh, when you're married... After some time, the love and attention is, is, is not exactly uh, the, the same. So, so let's, let's talk about that in particular. Love and attention. I'm going to come to you again. Uh, uh, yes, what, what's it like? 
Uh, please, before getting to that, let me just say he said something that was very important. He okay. spoke about the fact that after six months into marriage, reality sets in. I want to say that the part of the reality or expectations in marriage, we need to know that there's the adjustment phase. Mm -hmm. You know, when you meet, like, like most often during the adjustment phase, people get, I mean, there are a lot of heartbreaks, disappointments. But honestly, if you have to break past that place, you're mm -hmm. going to enjoy your marriage. Okay. You know, there is that needing point. I have my siblings, my direct followers are twin. Mm -hmm. And even though they are twin, sometimes they fight, sometimes yes. they quarrel. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine they are from the same mother, the yeah, same father, the same, <laughs> the same womb? So, so they fight, they misunderstand themselves. And talk less of you coming from another village or yeah, another background. background you yeah. know. So, so we should adjust ourselves to that. Okay, mm -hmm. coming back to love and affection. What I want to <laughs> say, Manda, is that I, I believe as parents, let me go now to parents, we should mm -hmm. learn to celebrate our children. Mm -hmm. We should learn to let them know their self-worth. Because some, like he said, I put up a post on Facebook and I was saying, men, please take good care of your wife. Some of them have been raped. Some of them are for broken homes. Mm -hmm. Some of them have messed up by life and they come into marriage thinking that marriage is going to be a form of comfort. Yeah. And before you know it, the pain is still there. So about affection, build your self-confidence first. That's what I'm going okay. to tell the young ladies out there. Love yourself. <laughs> the young men... Assert yourself, know you're a wonderful person, know you're intelligent, know you're well made. So you have that confidence for getting into a relationship. Yeah. So now, about the affection part, <laughs> it's all lovely. Doing, doing courtship, you know, you call yourself. Sometimes you, you. I remember one day I went to see off, my fiance went to see me off. Mm -hmm. He went and then ended halfway and then came back. You know, there was that going and coming. Yeah. Nobody wants to <laughs> leave the other. Mm -hmm. and, and there was that affection, there was that call phone calls text messages you know they'll think about your birthday mm -hmm. during courtship <laughs> sometimes after marriage is like children come in and then they forget about your birthday they're like no more valentine now. Yeah. Ah, you want valentine day again you know but but i think this issue of love and affection we need to work on it as couples now i'm mm -hmm. saying to the married people it's a daily work like i always say marriage is hard work mm -hmm. you know marriage is hard work it's like a farm you know you want to work on your farm you want to put manual please do it daily do it daily make sure you love your husband or your wife loves you both you know you both love yourselves in many ways communication finances sex which is very very important yeah we're coming to that in just a bit <laughs> <laughs> which is very very important you know affection and then know your love language like i always see sometimes honestly let me tell you I feel loved when my husband checks at the door at night. Like he gets up yeah. and then he's checking everywhere to see everywhere. I just feel, I just feel like a baby. You feel <laughs> safe, protected, huh? I feel protected, you know. So, so know your spouse's love language. Mm -hmm. Some people is just gifts. They want you to give them gifts. When you come back with chocolate, honey, this is for you. And the person is excited. Mm -hmm. So let's learn our love language as couples. Okay. <laughs> Very interesting. I'm going to come to you uh, with, the, with the same question, mm -hmm. Mr. But what, what's, your, what's your take on it? Well, my take on it is uh, <laughs> when I... When I think about love and affection before marriage, mm -hmm. <laughs> he laughs. Uh, oh yeah, I feel, I feel yes, I feel I feel a little worried, and I start asking questions. <laughs> about, is it a kind of temptation that people get into marriage, and all what we used to do when when we were still preparing to mm -hmm. disappear? Is so. It is really that there, there, there are those are two different worlds. Mm -hmm. Before and after, and after. Mm -hmm. like my sister said. We really need to cultivate love and affection in our marriage. Yeah. We need to think about those mm -hmm. good old days mm -hmm. and ask ourselves, but then, in those days, we used to do, th do things this way. Yeah. But right inside, what we really <laughs> wanted, mm -hmm. what are we doing, mm -hmm. what is happening? So I, I, I just think that there is a very big gap. Mm -hmm. And uh, during this discussion, mm -hmm. let's try to drive it deep into Great. couples okay. to know that <laughs> they have to bring back that oh yes, and that's an amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Before I come to you, Ronald, I, I want to ask this other question, this follow-up question, because I'm mm. trying to learn as much as I'm sure yeah. many single people who are thinking of getting married would, would, would love to learn. Uh -huh. But do you know that at a time, like when you're preparing for ma for marriage and you're you're in love and you're thinking about that special moment, do you know that at some point it will change or it just happens on you? At that particular moment, there's a lot of excitement that mm -hmm. you get lost. That's true. Okay. <laughs> you get most people. I mean most get lost mm -hmm. they are already into the, the what they are feeling at that particular moment yeah and to tell you that somebody that out of let me say out of uh, out of 100 mm -hmm. out of 100 pairs if you have 10 that know that 
as we are moving forward, there will be a change. Mm -hmm. Believe me, they will, they, will, they will drop the idea. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so most people it. don't even know. They, don't, they are just yeah, surprised they, by the changes. Of course. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And Taco, I, I'm, of course, I'm going to ask you the same thing. I want to know, <laughs> love and affection before and after marriage, what is it like? Well, uh, before marriage, usually it's very exciting. I work. know, he, he, he got married to my other best friend. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw some of it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very exciting. There's usually mm -hmm. a time issue. You never have enough time to spend with your mate. Yeah. With the person you're dating. So you, you cannot leave them and go home. You always mm -hmm. want to be together. Yeah. When you get home, you start calling, you start texting. <laughs> but there's a small issue that comes up when you finally get married. Mm -hmm. And just like when you're a student. When you finally have your final degree, your terminal degree, you feel achieved. Oh, so, right. so you stop wow. studying. Right. So when people get married, um, it's almost as if they've achieved that yeah. thing they've been hustling for. So I was coming to you all the time. I was texting all the time because it was finally driving to this point where we'll get married. Mm -hmm. And that's why, like, um, Madame Martha. Um, Martha. Martha said, <laughs> when after marriage now, it becomes a job. Mm -hmm. It no longer comes very natural because you've already achieved what you were aiming for. Mm -hmm. Now you need to work extra hard to keep the fire going, to keep mm -hmm. the flame burning. So that's where the difference really is. So after marriage is work and before marriage is almost natural because you, you don't wake up by the person, mm -hmm. you don't live with the person, yeah. you always have the desire to be with that person. But when you're married now, you wake up with this person, you sleep with this person, <laughs> you eat with the person, you are yeah. always with the person. So uh -huh. there's no need for calls. Yeah. People can just talk. There's no need for <laughs> SMSs when you can just tell her how you feel mm -hmm. and things like that. So that feeling of security and comfort almost makes you not work that hard again to show the affection and attention you won't show when you did it. Okay. All right. Now let's let's move to another um, very sen this one is a very sensitive um, aspect intimacy. Uh, I was reading up about the subject, of course, before I come on TV. I have to read up. And um, all the rights up I stumbled on, uh, they say, before you get married, people, they cannot wait. You know, we're going to be intimate every time. You know, we're going to be close, inseparable. <laughs> but w w in real life, what is it like? Uh, I'm going to start with Martha because um, she says she's a sexologist in the making. <laughs> so she has to earn that title. <laughs> This one is all yours. <laughs> no, you got me. You got me on that one. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> well, what I want to say is that marriage is really, marriage is a beautiful thing. And when it comes to intimacy, like one day I said, intimacy is not all about sex. Let's, let, let's start from there. Okay. Yeah. You could be intimate with your partner, the way you discuss, like, I'm in Dwala, right? Mm -hmm. I felt so loved this morning when my husband called, like, how did you sleep? What did you eat? Mm -hmm. It's intimate. It's, it's lovely. It's, I just felt comforted and loved. Mm -hmm. But now I want to come to the physical part. Well, I want to say that before I only knew my husband the day after my wedding. Like knowing, knowing. <laughs> we get Yes, we, we get it. <laughs> so, so, and uh, my parents never really told me what sex was all about. You know, teenager going in church, I never met a man. So, because people are asking that, how come you've become wild about sex? When we knew you were quiet, you were not into it, you never dated, but what happened? Now you're an expert. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the need. I've seen the need. There is a great need for, for, for us to talk about what we call taboo. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm not ashamed to talk about it. That's why I'm not afraid. The truth is that when people are dating, there is that passion, that thing in you is like, I want to see this person. I want to, I want to have the hug. I want to have the, the intimacy, the physical intimacy yeah. and everything. And then when marriage, when people get married, because children start coming in, yeah. the adjustment phase becomes difficult. So mm -hmm. men complain that my wife is no longer active in bed. The wife too says, my husband is always stressed up when he comes out from work. He's mm -hmm. tired and all of that. So I come in to try to build up that intimacy, that mm -hmm. passion, that doing that thing the way God, you know, God created sex. Let's start from there. <laughs> God, God. And the Bible says, whatever thing God created, he saw that it was good. You know, so, so that's why this thing of side chick also comes in. Because you feel like you're not getting what you want, what you want to get. Mm -hmm. And they feel like, okay, let me just go to the other side. Maybe I'm going to have the real food and then you eat outside you realize that it's not very salt it's not really well spiced <laughs> you become frustrated and everything but I, I want to say that in this show today we're encouraging couples go back to your place of intimacy mm -hmm. like when you just got married yeah. you know the expectation is that the expectation i had was like we're going to have sex for money to night today <laughs> i mean like forever you know but the reality comes in your job other things family and then you start spacing out mm -hmm. But I want to encourage the, the married people outside. They just like you check on every other thing. Check on your sex life. Mm -hmm. 
check when last did we have intimacy when last did we communicate when last did i talk to my wife or to my spouse in a romantic way when last did we go out to have that intimate talk you know it's very important most often marriages get destroyed because of this issue of the bedroom yeah. and nobody wants to talk about it but that's the truth that's the truth so we come in to educate the women that please do not allow yourself go because you have kids mm -hmm. you know please still take care of that man and also the men lately i've been talking with mm -hmm. some women I like a woman's perspective. Mm -hmm. <laughs> lately i've been talking with a group of anyway i talk with women a lot because i have a group of women and then i don't know what's happening with the men i'm sorry to say that <laughs> but some men have become have started stabbing their wives sexually and it's so traumatizing. I know men used to say that women do that to of them. But please, <laughs> <laughs> but please, when you guys do it to your wives, it's, 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 oh God. It's, 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 it's vice versa. Eh? Okay. <laughs> it's vice versa. Okay. Since so this is vice versa, let's get into it already. <laughs> anyway. On the matter of the intimacy, what's it like for men? Okay. Well, honestly speaking, I will still get back to what my brother said. That's before marriage. Mm -hmm. That's the intimacy is so close that you you see yourself already in one kind of paradise. You know, mm -hmm. I think about how we used to do in the village. You go to see off your fiance. You go and then you even reach their house. <laughs> As you are going back, she comes back, and you keep <laughs> moving like that. You keep moving like that. But once you people are already in, and then you start creating one kind of gap. Mm -hmm. It makes marriage to be having some calyx, yeah. let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. So we are saying that intimacy in marriage, we should always think back at those good old days. Yeah. It used to be very sweet because we were very close. Yeah. But now the gap we begin to create today is creating a lot of problems mm -hmm. in the home. Right. And we need it back. Now, it it might not only be about sex. It mm -hmm. might, in short, just being together as we used to be, mm -hmm. discussing, like my brother was saying, that no longer calls, no longer messages. Since we are together now, let's be talking. Yeah. But now some of us create motifs. You stay apart, you start calling. Calling every day does not mean that you are, very, you are even intimate. Eh? You, yeah. are, you, are, you are not. You are not. Because calling can be an excuse to be <laughs> close. Yeah. So we are, we, are, we are saying that we really need to work on that aspect mm -hmm. because, believe me, it is creating a lot of uh, problems in the home. And on the other hand, too, one realizes that the intimacy has just shifted, maybe from your main person to, to, to the say, the kids, mm -hmm. who just came in. It's like they're already cutting in between. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we just pray that partners <laughs> should not forget yeah. that before the kids came in, they were close <laughs> together. And <laughs> that, that's right. Now, on the matter of in intimacy, Ronald, what frustrates men? As, as per their, 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 their wives on this issue? Well, uh, before I go into what the frustration of men, I would like to say, just like she said, intimacy is not just sex. Mm -hmm. And that's true, especially for women. Uh, for women to enjoy sex, uh, you have to show them love, care, and respect. Please, can you sip some wine for that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Let me sip on his behalf. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, yeah, Brother Skipper. <laughs> so you need to show them a lot of love and attention, mm -hmm. even when it's not time for the physical intimacy. Mm -hmm. and when it gets to time for physical intimacy, they're really going to enjoy you. Because for women, it's a whole set. Mm. Yeah. It's a whole package. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of the fact that you are in love with them. It's mm -hmm. not just the action. Mm -hmm. But for men, it's more of a physical activity. So that's where usually the differences are. Mm -hmm. So most men who get into marriages do not understand that women are this way. Yeah. That they need a lot of care, a lot of attention. Even during the action, a lot of care and attention should be taken so that the woman can enjoy this activity. Mm -hmm. Most men get into marriage too ignorant for that. Mm -hmm. And so the sexual activities now will not be the way they had anticipated before they got married. Mm -hmm. So because of frustration and things like that, the regularity of this activity will start dropping. Mm -hmm. And you start finding them looking for satisfaction out of the, the marriage. Okay. All right. Wow, that was good. All right. Uh, um, <laughs> sorry. If, if, if she says it was good, then it was good. <laughs> because Linda, can I say something? He sure, spoke about sure, the cool. fact that we should get prepared. The truth is that a, a man, I'm going to say this, uh, that men get 
erections like like 10 times a day you know they see a beautiful woman they're like okay then they come down self-control comes in <laughs> i'm sorry men are you sure i read for some men <laughs> you read <laughs> <laughs> for some men, you guys are interesting. No, really, some you're right. <laughs> so some right. Mm -hmm. But for a woman, she's like that that machine that you need to put the oil, you know, work on her, yeah. you know, tune her to that level. Yesterday, I put up a post on Facebook and I said, Please, men, after doing what you know how to do best, ask her if she's satisfied. There should be communication <laughs> and, and let her know, tell her thank you mm -hmm. that it was good and she will do better. I told the ladies, I know it's the same gel of rice that you have, but change your presentation. You know what I mean? We are not getting to stay on air. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? So, so he's saying that, please, I'm speaking on behalf of women. I think I should. Yeah. Men, take your time. You know, prepare her, love her, and then she's going to give you her best. She'll give you her body and her heart in the activity. Mm -hmm. Because for a man, you could be angry with you, but see her sex with you. A woman, you need to prepare her emotionally, prepare her, and then she will be able to give her best in bed. Okay. Very important for us women. Yeah, Ronald, you wanted to add something? Yes, yes. And um, another problem usually is that uh, couples don't talk about sex. Hmm. Yes, not, okay. not only do they consider it a taboo subject, they even don't want to talk about it. So they only act. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you just find somebody in the morning they are very angry for no reason. <laughs> Whereas it's because something didn't happen there last night. But I don't know, but couples need to talk about uh, sex, if possible, even before they get married. What expectations do they have yeah. of it? How should it be done? And things like that. After doing it, men especially should ask for feedback. Okay. Very important. Feedback. Okay. Feedback. Okay. Yes. Ask your wife how it went. Did mm -hmm. she enjoy it? What would you have done better? Mm -hmm. Things like that. It should be, women too should do the same. Should be women should, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that feedback is going to ensure that uh, the activity is enjoyable for the, the two of you. Men get sexually aroused a lot faster than women. Mm -hmm. And that can lead to a natural tendency of selfishness. So since you are already aroused, you may want to already quickly go into the action. But women take a little more time. Mm -hmm. So you need to like my sister said, cultivate her until she gets to a point where she's ready, then you can go ahead. And please, men, don't so. sleep immediately after work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, feel free to add that, please. I'm, I'm, I'm very much like, are you watching the show today? I'm just listening and taking and noting down all the points. I'm going to allow them lead me today. <laughs> the way he screams my name. But that's the truth. We, we want, there's the afterglow. You know, there are three stages. There is the pre, the foreplay, what we call foreplay. There's yeah. the actual act. And then the afterglow for women, honestly, that's, that's where they feel like, this is it. You're not sleeping. I know, I don't know, but it's like there's something that happens then you guys go to sleep. But I don't know whether we, if, they, if, that, if that love and affection was still there, will you have to take a lot of time to prepare a woman? Uh, before you, you come together, her, her at her least all of you should already be, you the, know. The truth is that her makeup, she's a receiver, right? You uh -huh. are the man. The way God has created you, your, your joystick or whatever you have, mm. is an outlet. A woman receives. Yeah. So for you to receive, you have to prepare yourself. That's just natural. Oh. Even during courtship, even during courtship, there is, that, there is that thing in you that you tell yourself that this is how sex is going to be when I get married. Mm -hmm. And when you get married, now, there's still that phase that you have to prepare yourself each time for the man. For example, let's just be practical. Um, I'm a mother of three. Sometimes you, you come back, you're, you're tired, you know, physically you're worn out. <coughs> but your husband comes back, he too is tired. Like, like I always say men, sometimes when they're tired, they need sex. When they're hungry, they need sex. When they're angry, they need it. But for a woman, I'm sorry, but that's the truth. For a woman, if she's not in the mood, you need to take her there. Mm -hmm. So please, men, take your wives to that place. Even though they are still passionate about you, they just want that pampering, then they'll get to that place. Oh, we'll always do that. <laughs> Always? <laughs> always do that. No, but if men always did that, then we'll not be talking about before and after. That's, that, that's we'll not be talking about expectation versus reality. Yeah, mother, that's why we are here, to tell men that we should always be doing it. Bravo. Okay, <laughs> all right. I, I, I believe that uh, they're listening and that they've, they, they've learned if they weren't doing that before. Now, let's, let's talk about something else, which is equally sensitive appearance. And I want to start with, um, with uh, a man on this one because... It, more husbands than wives complain when it comes to uh, the matter of uh, appearance. So men say, uh, when I met you, you were looking like this. Mm -hmm. Now you have become this. You no longer take care of your hair, your hair. You don't dress well like you used to dress while we dated. And that becomes a problem in, in the marriage. Let me start with you, Mr. Mr. Bo. What, what is it like? About that, I would like to find out something. 
when the man complains of the woman not taking care of this, not doing this when she was doing before, what, 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 what role does he play at that particular moment? Okay. Because I think that if you want, if, if you want, to, if you want your thing to look neat, mm -hmm. you prepare the thing to look neat. I agree. But when you abandon the thing to itself, mm -hmm. and the thing decides to be the way it wants to be, mm -hmm. and you start complaining, who do you blame? So I think that as a man, I have that duty because I like to be seen looking good. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you are looking poor, it means it's my wish. Yeah, it reflects on yes, you. Yes, it means it's my wish. Like somebody used to say, okay, fine, when you see a man outside there, he tells the kind of home from where he's coming. He tells the kind of wife he has in the house. Mm -hmm. So if I want you to look good, I tell you, please be like this for me. Mm -hmm. Let me be happy. If you are not and I start accusing you, let me tell you and you refuse, then I start shouting at you. Okay. So I think that at that point, we, we, we the men, we have a greater share of blame. Okay. I'm, I'm sure many wives are nodding their heads at home. <laughs> see my hands? Yes. yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, 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 well said. <laughs> now, from one man to another, uh, uh, Ronald, what, what would you say on the issue? Well, um, I, I, men are just selfish. I'm saying <laughs> okay. because uh, the change is not just for woman's women. lawyer. Absolutely. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> not that it's, I'm a woman's lawyer, but um, <laughs> men will do the more of the complaining. But mm -hmm. studies show that men change within the first five years of marriage than women. Okay. Or That's within the first year, within the first year of marriage, because people now feel secure, they feel comfortable. They stop doing those things they did so that they can look slim, mm -hmm. fit, and handsome and beautiful. Mm -hmm. So they start gaining weight. But studies show that men gain 30 kilograms after the first year of marriage, while okay. women gain just 25. Mm -hmm. But men complain more than the women do. Yeah. So it's just a matter of understanding mm -hmm. that with age comes, um, people gain weight and size with age. Mm -hmm. People's physical appearances change with age. Yeah. It's normal. It should be expected. Even yeah. children should know this. Mm -hmm. Secondly, when you feel comfortable, you can gain size. When you feel happy. You yeah. can gain weight when you feel secure. Yeah. You can gain weight. Then again, post uh, before wedding stress, pre wedding stress, and things like that <laughs> yeah. can cause the lady to really slim out. Uh -huh. <laughs> they can really slim. And during marriage, organization for marriage, women worry about too many details. They are usually more stressed, more anxious than men. These things cause them to lose weight. Mm -hmm. So in their wedding dress, you find that they are really very yeah. beautiful or mm -hmm. slim and things like that. And your husband is very happy. A lot more work is supposed to be done after the marriage mm -hmm. so that the woman can maintain that size. So husband probably should take their wives to the gym. Mm -hmm. They should accompany them to the gym. Yeah. Most men will just sit and ask their wives maybe to do sports early in the morning. And those things are not easy. Mm -hmm. Even for me to sleep and wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning is no joke. Yeah. So I will not expect my wife to be doing that every morning. Mm -hmm. So probably I should provide some assistance. Maybe yeah. do it with her, encourage her and things like that. Mm -hmm. Because I want her to look good for me. And I know that she too has expectations for me. Mm -hmm. So I always have to keep that in mind before I make those complaints. Okay. Um, Lucy uh, Tako, you're yeah. <laughs> very fortunate woman. Yeah. Your husband is excellent. <laughs> Now let's hear from the women, and I'm very, very glad to say that uh, we're finally being joined by, uh, <laughs> she's smiling, Sally Achufo in Tama. Uh, she had to battle traffic to be here, and she's, she's here with us. She's a businesswoman, an employer, and she runs an amazing center for kids. There's so much we're going to uh, uh, learn from her. She's here, and I'm going to, to, to hit you immediately with a question. <laughs> we'll be t yes, we'll be talking about um, appearance, uh, uh, reality in, in marriages, because sometimes before uh, you get married, they demand is looking one way the woman is looking another or is looking you know he's looking fine looking one way and then after the marriage things start changing and men mostly complain so as a, as a, as a wife what do you have to say about that um first off the one constant we have in life is change yes <laughs> change is the only thing you can be sure is going to happen mm -hmm. in life however i understand when men complain because change happens mm -hmm. now when you're complaining have you made provision for that change not to happen. Case in point, your wife has put on weight, she's had a few babies. Mm -hmm. Oh, you need to go to the gym. Have you paid her gym membership? Good. Are you aware if she has a full equipment? Mm -hmm. If she does, do you accompany her to the gym? Encourage. Do you encourage her to go to the gym? Do you actually accept her the way she is That's and cool. then make her want to be better for her first and not necessarily for you? Those are the questions that we all need to ask ourselves as spouses. Mm -hmm. But the men need to think about it very critically. 
because our culture unfortunately makes it look like the woman marriage is the end all and be all of a woman yeah it's not it's a partnership mm -hmm. it's a partnership where two people wake up every morning and say look I have decided this morning I'm going to give it my best shot yeah I want you to be your best and I want to be my best if however you think it's a leader and servant role mm -hmm. that's where all these complaints come in yeah. but if you realize that you can work hand in hand you can go the journey as mm -hmm. a couple that's why they call it a couple yeah if you realize you can go the journey together then those complaints really don't have to come mm -hmm. even if they come they are not complaints they are more discussions okay they are more babes let's let you know let's go to the gym <laughs> babes let's go take a walk yeah. things like that not necessarily complaints Okay. Yeah. Now, now be, before you, you came, we, we talked about a very juicy topic. I'm not going to uh, <laughs> let you miss. I, I need to get your opinion on the subject. We'll be okay. talking about intimacy between couples. And I've learned so much from these married people here. <laughs> uh, they say be, be, before a uh, 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 marriage, uh, couples are always together. They think they're going to be intimate all the time. Morning, afternoon, night. She said she thought it would be, you know, <laughs> all, day, all night. All day, all night. <laughs> yeah. But that in reality, when you get married, it's not always the case. You're, you're tired. You've had kids, there's work, there's so much to think about. F from your own standpoint, w what is that like? The, 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 you know, the expectation and then the reality. What would you have to say on that? Um, I would totally agree with, with <laughs> what Martha just told you before I came in. Mm -hmm. It's um, We expect to have that person with us 24-7. Yeah. Oh, it's my best friend. It's my companion. It's my kongosa partner. Mm -hmm. It's all of those things. Yeah. But then kids happen. Then work happens. Work. Then in-laws happen. Mm -hmm. Then brothers and sisters happen. Mm -hmm. Then life just happens and when life happens those things change you have a baby you have to wake up at all hours of the night yeah. i can guarantee you that some night you will just turn your ear and say oh god try <laughs> you know what I, you know yeah it, it happens mm -hmm. in every couple but as a couple you need to be able to sit down and talk about it if it's not working mm -hmm. and then find ways to make it work yeah the raising children is not only for the wife cleaning yes. the house is not only for the wife going to the market is not only for the wife we need to find a middle point. If you work somewhere in town, on coming home on Friday at the end of the month, just surprise your wife. Do the grocery. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's in a supermarket, air conditioned. You're not really suffering, are you? <laughs> it's not <laughs> Mashe Sangaga or Mokolo or any of those things, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think the expectation is that, you know, the woman will handle all the baby stuff, mm -hmm. handle all the food stuff, the handle the house, make it on point mm -hmm. and at any time tea i bring my friends home i have a three course meal on the table yeah. those are the expectations mm -hmm. but the reality is that she works she's tired yeah. she's got babies the baby is colicky the yeah. other one has a fever mm -hmm. she is has not slept for all of five days <laughs> you know yeah. everything is going wrong with her she's not had her hair done yeah. she's stressed oh her friend is sick or her, her friend has invited her for a wedding and she doesn't have what to wear mm -hmm. those little things matter to us yeah and that's what stresses us out so as husbands, we plead mm -hmm. that you just sit us down and talk. Yeah. We like to talk. Mm -hmm. We will talk. Okay. <laughs> That's really true. Let me say something. True. Like one day I was asking myself that, please, I'm sorry, the men, I love you guys. Yes. <laughs> we do love you. <laughs> we do love you guys. But what, what happens? Like during courtship, you see a sanguine. You see that your husband, is, your fiancé at that time is outgoing. Mm -hmm. You know, he's jovial. He's your friend. You can even toast him, you guys. You know. But after the ring, it becomes pa. <laughs> uh, he wants to be addressed as that Z. He wants. Yes. <laughs> you know, what happens? That friendship part, that jovial part, that playing part. Mm -hmm. I want to ask the man, I'm sorry, but do, do you guys feel that you're more of a father when you do those manly things? I'm sorry, I'm speaking on behalf of women, many women. Mm -hmm. I'm a voice. Many wives. <laughs> many wives. <laughs> do you? Because we want to have you back, play with us, help me unbutton my shoes, my zip. But I, I don't know. I'm sorry, to, but I think in this show, maybe the men should talk to us. What happens that you guys just want to become the papa who is reading his newspaper in the parlor? And, and so. No, I, 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 I will talk like Eric. Eh? Because <laughs> each, each time I think about the fact that those good days are gone, mm -hmm. I, I, I feel bad. So the issue of taking me to that level is not part of me because that's where some of the women they try to put the men very far from them because they say okay we are now at it at a different stage mm -hmm. but i want to remain young that's eric <laughs> <laughs> okay i would you say the same thing right now um while i'm not like that <laughs> <laughs> i just love him <laughs> I try to, because in my house um, 
I do the laundry. You are aware of that? Yeah, that's true. I do the laundry. I clean the house. Uh, besides cooking that I'm not very good at, I do everything else. So I don't look Is at it as... teach your uh, friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I hope they're listening. So, to, me, to me, those things are not the job for the women. Uh, a man is the head of the family, and usually those activities also fall under your jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you can make time for okay. peace, wow. help your spouse. But on the other hand, sometimes when women have babies, mm -hmm. um, the attention shifts a lot from their husbands to their children. Mm -hmm. I mean, the child becomes the reason for all their actions. Mm -hmm. it's, it's for the baby. Mm -hmm. It's for the baby. So they, dr they, they drive a rift mm -hmm. between that intimate relationship they once had with the man. Mm -hmm. So if probably the man wants to do something intimate at night, mm -hmm. the baby will become an excuse if you're not in the mood and things like that. Whereas those are things that could probably just yeah. be, be talked mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. So when that rift comes, then the man now assumes this fatherly role <laughs> where he sits somewhere and then he reads his newspaper. <laughs> 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 so probably that's why, but that's not good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Usually, like I said, women are emotional. And women want to feel loved. Yes, women are more cooperative when you show them that you have attention for them. When my mm -hmm. daughter was uh, was born, the first time I stayed with her, I, I didn't sleep for four days. The first four <laughs> nights, I didn't sleep. I asked my wife to sleep. I'll care for the child in wow. the night. Wow. If she wow. needs food, then I'll wake you up. So I'll stay up the whole night for four days. More white. More white. More white. Let me be drinking on it. Do the drinking. <laughs> He just won the Father of the Year award. Oh, yes, I agree. So it's, um, it's very important for men. But most men, what we should understand is that some of these things for men are psychological. Mm. Most men, mm. when they are growing up, are not mm. trained to bring children. Mm. Usually those mm. training are given all to whom. Yeah. Yeah. So world. if you are growing up with your world. sisters and all those things, if there's a baby in the house, they will not call the guy. They will call the lady. So yeah. ladies almost have that training. Yeah. Now when most men who grew up in that circumstance get married, they are wired to think that mm -hmm. it's the responsibility of their wife to do what? So yeah. sometimes when you leave them with a the baby for the first time, they are the lost at <laughs> yeah. They will not be able to change diapers. Mm -hmm. They will not know what to do if the baby cries. Yeah. I remember the first time I had to dress my daughter. It was not easy. <laughs> I, I gave up. I mean, it took a wicked trial to succeed. So it's not easy for the men. Sometimes when we women to understand why men will behave like this, mm -hmm. we can draw them closer and get them to understand. Wow. 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 Okay. Sorry, before we Wonderful cross over, inside. I want to ask the ladies a question. Whether it, yes, uh, Do you believe that, the, that some women might not really want the the men to interfere in, call it their activities, their domain. Are they, are they women like that? Who would rather not have uh, the husband in the kitchen, you know, not help you, them with, are they? I'm <laughs> having love difficulties oh, well. yeah. thinking there's some people like that. Yeah. I actually um, have difficulties imagining, imagining. Yeah. a woman who wouldn't want a man <coughs> doing things. You know, some help. <laughs> what she's saying, wow. what he's saying is, is may not be wrong. Mm -hmm. There are some women who don't, want to see their husband doing things in the kitchen to, to them others may perceive their husband as not being manly mm -hmm. okay. okay but then those okay. women okay. Okay. yes okay. those women may still okay. expect their husbands to assist in yeah. other ways yes mm -hmm. too. like you said i think mm -hmm. upbringing thank god we are parents yes. or parents in the making i think upbringing has a role to play just like you said if for example i've made my my, my son I have two sons they know that they are king kongs and their their sister is the one doing everything yeah when he gets married, he's going to do the same thing. Like the way I was telling my son Definitely. that, see, by God's grace, I'm, I'm training women to be, to be ideal. I must start with my sons. Mm -hmm. If I don't train them tomorrow, they're going to mess up. Mm -hmm. So they should be able to cook with me. I'm a catcher. They yes, cook with definitely. me and yeah. they help me. They are still young, five, seven. But I try to do that. I think as parents, we should be able to train our, our kids, both the boys and the girls together, and let them yeah. know that you can, what your sister does, you can also do the same mm -hmm. thing. Yes, you know. definitely. Wow. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. this is this is all so enlightening. I'm, I'm learning so much. Now, b b b before we move on to something else, let's let's talk a little bit more about the the, the appearance issue. Okay. I didn't get to get your opinion uh, on the subject. Now, are, are we saying? I mean, from going by everything I've heard on, on set so far, that women sometimes do not take the blame at all when it comes to the issue of, of appearance. Absolutely not. <laughs> is, is that what we are saying? No. Uh, not. Let me say something. Like like I said backstage, I said while we were at the maker room, I said, when you're growing up as a lady, mm -hmm. there is that thing that the parents, your parents have to put into you, self-esteem. Mm -hmm. You know, you know you're beautiful. Yeah. The truth is, I always say that I'm a beautiful, fat, black woman. You know, I've spoken that thing into me that I'm so sh sure about it. No issue with my size, you know. It's true I'm plus size. 
<laughs> but, but, but the we truth, rock. Yeah. we rock, right? We do. We but the truth is that the truth is that, like I said something to on Facebook. I said, please, ladies, if you have the money, go for your spa, do your nails. I didn't do my nails. I was hearing. Do your nails. Do your your. Take good care of yourself because some men will not appreciate. There is this story of this money. True story. The wife went out. She had to go do her hair over the weekend. Then she went at the beauty salon. It was too stuffy. She didn't do her hair. So when she came back, the other was like, "Wow, I love your hair, dude." <laughs> <laughs> that was th because it's a good house buyer, so we yeah. had, had that thing of appreciating them. And I was like, Sorry, I didn't do my hair. <laughs> it was like, but You still look good, my wife. So the men should learn to appreciate their wives. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a way, like she said, there is a way you can tell your wife that, baby, um, I know you're looking good, but please work on something. Like one lady wrote to me the other day, you know, I, I, I chat a lot with ladies, and then she said, Mom, do you know that I'm depressed? I'm like, What's the issue? She said, I just have had a baby. The baby is two months old. My husband is complaining about the size of my breast, that it has become flappy and everything, and it has demoralized her. You know, these are realities that women go through. Thanks. Please, men, know, they, know how to communicate these things to us. Yes, <laughs> Know how to tell us in a Don't very try. lovely manner. <laughs> you know, it's going to help us because nobody wants to feel that they are not handsome or beautiful. Mm -hmm. no, no human being. No. All of us want to know yeah. that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are looking good. Mm -hmm. So, but about appearance, I'm also going to say that us ladies, we should, we should sit up. Yeah. We should, we should, we should. Men are visual. They want to see the beautiful body. They want to see the beautiful skin. You know, let's 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 work on it also. Let's okay. work on it. I'm encouraging my sisters. Let's let's do what we can do. Thank okay. you Allow for nature. Thank you for striking a balance. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to just to compliment what she's saying. Um, Go on. Sometimes too, some women are very careless. Mm -hmm. yes, Chai, bro. Yes, yes. I'll, I'll see your wife know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's true. Sometimes some women are quite careless. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I've seen situations where the man make the effort to, I mean, he provides for those things. Mm -hmm. The wife doesn't make up, doesn't make any effort to look beautiful. Mm -hmm. They don't do anything to look attractive. Mm -hmm. And then when probably the man starts looking somewhere else, you start complaining. Uh, it's, it's also not beautiful. Men are very physical. Mm -hmm. That's another word I'll use for visual. Mm -hmm. Physical meaning that we are driven by what we see. Mm -hmm. So if you do not care for yourself well, high body hygiene and things like that, you always turn us off, mm -hmm. so to speak. You find that uh, you want to get intimate and you even don't turn me on. Mm -hmm. Because what turns men on is physical things, what we see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> activates our mind. It's, we are not like women where it's what we hear and, and what we are made to imagine that we turn off on okay. <laughs> It's what we see. That's something you can't take away from us. So you must work hard to always keep that physical appearance um, impressive. Okay. You important. want to say something? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, again, I go back to your point of women not trying. Mm -hmm. Some of us just don't know. Yes. Oh. Some of us yeah. absolutely have no clue. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that, that's where it comes again. Find a way to tell us in a way that we will understand. Mm -hmm. We don't speak the same language, even mm -hmm. though we are a couple. Yeah. We speak completely different languages. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is understand each other enough to communicate mm -hmm. with each other. Some of us have no clue. True story. I have a friend who, the first time she, she made up her face, I had to take her to someone to get done. She's never done it. She's 35. Wow. She's never, as in pencil eye lipstick, yes, never. Wow. Wow. She sees it, but she has no clue, so she doesn't bother about it. Mm -hmm. She might like it, she might not like it, but she never had it, uh, the courage to mm -hmm. go try on try her it. own. Yeah. So sometimes we just don't know in our defense. Mm -hmm. And of course, sometimes our mentor just don't know how to communicate with us because mm -hmm. as you said, when we have children, we just everything becomes about the child. Yeah. And we pretty much shut down the relationship with our spouse, mm -hmm. which is and not. <laughs> and I also want Sorry. to plead with the men, please, uh, do not feel intimidated if your wife is good looking, if your wife is so, so. <laughs> you know? It's your trophy. Like I always say, men are like hunters. We are your, you, when you have your wife, this is your trophy. You've won the trophies in your car. But please make sure you take good care of it. Dust because it, <laughs> polish it, <laughs> yes, it's it, you know, so that it can be celebrated. Because some men, um, men, I must let you know, some men feel that if my wife is looking good, mm -hmm. like my sister is looking good this afternoon, oh, maybe much. another man is going to, 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 to set his eyes on her. Mm -hmm. So and for they feel that, and they feel threatened. The thing is, I mean, I'm very jealous. Let me say this behind the scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they heard you all right. We are because we, we are because we love you guys. But before we go on, I wanted to find out again from the women. <laughs> 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 yes, yes, yes. This is my co-presenter. <laughs> 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 no, yeah. So 
because when we when, as we talk along, there are certain things that uh, yeah. Pop up. So I wanted to find out whether makeup is obligatory part of a woman's beauty. Um, Alda, if you if sure, you, if sure, you sure, go permit on, me, sure. yeah. makeup is not obligatory. Mm -hmm. Makeup is used to enhance what yeah. is already beautiful mm -hmm. and to hide what you really don't want it to be seen. <laughs> That's the use of makeup. Now, if you have a woman who is naturally beautiful and she doesn't want to do makeup, that's a whole different ball game. And you appreciate her the and way And you appreciate she is. her the yeah. way she is. Mm -hmm. However, there's a clause there. She may be very beautiful and you appreciate her the way she is, but she likes makeup. Mm -hmm. Your job is to help her grow, to come to a fulfillment of her potential. Yeah. And if makeup is what she wants, let her get at it. They have seasons and they have phases. The phase will pass. Wow, I love that. I think that the phase will pass. Thank you. <laughs> sure, sure, Rona. <laughs> yes, um, makeup is not obligatory. When I even talk of makeup, um, the painting is just a small part of it, yeah. which okay. I really don't mm. take too serious. To be dressing, yeah. the way the way you look, you must not do the makeup. The way you arrange your hair, your, yeah. yes, that's what counts. <laughs> the, way dress, the, way the, the, the way he said it, and, and, <laughs> you know, yes, yes, men should not be intimidated when their wives are beautiful. Rather, when I have all the other guys. Looking at my wife, then I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I'm sure that then, yeah, I made the right choice. Yeah. yeah. So men should not be intimidated. Make your wife look her best. Yeah. It's very important for her first. Yeah. Then you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Wow. Absolutely. Okay. Ooh. Uh, boy, am I learning today? <laughs> okay. So let's let's talk at, uh, talk about something else. Uh, this one is really very serious. It's finance, money. Now, expectations, realities. I don't know anything about it. So, um, <laughs> since the man is always uh, the head of the family and he usually has to assume like uh, the biggest share of the responsibility, of the financial responsibility, I'm going to start with the men on this one. Mr. Bo, what is it like for married people? Money, finance, how does that work? Uh, I, I will always go back to the past yes. before I come right <laughs> in. Oh, the dreamy <laughs> stage. Yeah, because... Uh, <laughs> I still remember when we are still thinking of getting in there, mm -hmm. nobody has money. Yeah. The little, the little franc we have is for everybody. Nobody claims ownership of it. Mm -hmm. But when we get right inside there, we start looking at who is to do what. Yeah. How is it to be done? Mm -hmm. Who is to pay the bills for this? Who is to pay the bills for that? And so on and so forth. And uh, it makes, it creates a lot of problems in the home. Mm -hmm. And I think that money, they say, is the root of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we should not. We should. We should. We should not. We should not agree completely on that assertion in our in our in our in our marriage life. Okay. So I'm thinking that if you know, we, we, we go to court to say, okay, uh, uh, common, uh, what bank yeah, account, yeah, and common, yeah. mm -hmm. joint property, joint property, and so on. But when we come right inside, we 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 we, we begin to look at ways to twist. So we should always respect what we sat and agreed on, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to money. And this can only be done if in the home we think of the common good of that home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then nobody still will have money. Everybody will be using what is at the disposal of the family mm -hmm. as one person. Okay. Um, the woman should not keep thinking that the money is mine. Since the man is the head of the, the, the family, please excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> the man is the head of the family, you are the person to be providing. Yeah. No, let's let's both provide. Okay. Let's both provide. Otherwise you have a situation like I, I don't want to quote but I have I have I had an experience with one guy in in Yaoundia in your place. <laughs> the guy because he lost his job, the woman just sat on him. But the woman had a good job and that job was thanks to the man. Mm -hmm. So I think that money, we should be very careful with it if yeah. we think that our, our home will be a happy home. Absolutely. Okay. All right. And, and, and Ronald, is this something uh, couples talk about before they get married? Or it just happens on you're married and okay, this is a situation, let's, let's work through it. Or is this something you think about before you get married? Uh, the truth is that usually you are supposed to talk about those things before you get married. <laughs> usually, yeah. I like <laughs> it, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. And some couples do.
talk about it before uh, the, the marriage. Mm -hmm. But the problem usually is that we, when, before we get married, we just don't understand the reality of marriage. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so our discussion really will not cover the full scope of That's the things true. we are going to meet. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, maybe when we're getting married, we agreed that, okay, we'll have a, the same account. Mm -hmm. We'll deposit money there. And when people need to do withdrawals, they'll consult each other. Okay. And now you're married, and your small brother who is in the village now calls you that, Manda, I need 50,000. And you know that your husband will not allow it. <laughs> <laughs> and now, so they, they, you see, some form of discord now comes in, and yeah. you start looking for way to have a separation. You start mm -hmm. wanting to have, I want to have my money, I'm an adult, and, mm -hmm. and use my money. So usually what's best is that um, couples decide how they want to use their money. Mm -hmm. And then they allow people as adults to use their good judgment on how they want to. Personally, what I think is that my wife's money is her money. I'm the husband. Mm -hmm. I have to provide for the family. If my wife is uh, as conscious of her position in the family as I am, mm -hmm. she'll be willing to share her resources for the provision of the family. Okay. So my salary is mine. Her salary is hers. Mm -hmm. When we collect money at the end of the month, we'll sit and decide how exactly, we'll, what are the activities we'll do so that we'll share. So that if my brother calls to ask for money, sometimes I may not necessarily need to consult Dissolve her. her. Okay. Sometimes I'll, but I'll tell her, I'll tell, I'll let her know anyway. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. very important, husbands, please. <laughs> Even if you will not take your wife's advice, consult her. Mm -hmm. Very important. So Why? families have to sit and decide exactly what's the best way they have to deal with that. But the truth is that before marriage, you really don't know enough to discuss exactly how your money is going to be used. Okay, yes. all right. So before we, we hear from the ladies, let's just say that it's that time uh, when you can reach us via phone. The phone numbers uh, will be coming up on your screen any minutes now, and you can call us. We don't take text messages. You can only call us and tell us what you think if you want. If you have a question to ask, feel free. If you want to contribute, we'll be glad to hear from you. So uh, start dialing. Now let, let's hear from, from the wives. Uh, okay. On this matter, what's it like for, for, for the wife, for the woman? Um, we were raised to understand that the man provides for the family, mm -hmm. culturally, biblically. That's what is being drummed into our heads, even today. Yeah. But the realities of then are not the realities of now. Then, most of our moms were housewives or teachers, or, so they were home. Mm -hmm. They could do a lot of the activities at home to generate some form of income yeah. to help the family, mm -hmm. which was great, which was perfect. And the cost of living was really um, affordable. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> a loaf of bread at the time, 25 francs, mm -hmm. you're good. Yeah. Now, <laughs> it's very much different. Mm -hmm. But the reality is today, one working person in a family puts a strain on that family finances. Okay. Everything has skyrocketed. The prices of everything has skyrocketed. So if you have two kids and it's, you expect only the man, for example, to provide the financing, it becomes very difficult. Even if he has a, a super great job, yeah. he will still at some point feel drained because he's spending all his life working and he's really th he thinks he's not seeing anything from it because he doesn't have little change to hang out with friends or things like that. Personally, what I think is or should be is couples need to talk about it. He, he said that and he insisted that you don't know the full scope of what you talk about. But there are some bills that are constant. You have to have a shelter, you have to have feeding, you have to have medical, you have to have school for any offspring you may have. Mm -hmm. Those ones are constant. You can discuss those ones prior to the marriage mm -hmm. and agree on it. But when you agree on it, it's not set in stone. Mm -hmm. It can change based on circumstances. Yeah. That's the first part. The second part to me is when you get into the marriage and both of you are working, to avoid matters or stories that touch the heart, as we say, <laughs> have three accounts. The husband has his account, the wife has her account, and you have a family account. Okay. You both declare what you make from, to each other. Mm -hmm. But then you come back and say, look, this is what the family needs to run. Mm -hmm. This is how much of my money I can put into this. Okay. And this is how much of your money you can put into this. And that account, that is that pool where the family is run from. Yeah. Now, when that cousin calls from the village and say, oh, that my tailoring that you promised to pay for is mm -hmm. 35000 <laughs> you will let your husband know, say, look, A, B, C, D call, and I said, I thought it would be wise to, you know, empower her, yeah. and I've decided to pay for it. But, hey, this is coming from my personals, yeah. as I will call it. Mm -hmm. This is coming from my personals, not from the family account. Mm -hmm. When his brother calls or his mom and things like that, 
you can now do that from your personal house. It doesn't directly impact yeah. the family. Mm -hmm. The trick with that method is communication. You need to be open with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's your money, your spouse may know, okay, she's probably given, okay, 50% of her paycheck into the family account, so she's still got some money. Yeah. Let me hit her up for a small, you know, a soft loan. Mm -hmm. I desperately need 100K, like my car is broken down, something. Mm -hmm. And you go to her and says, oh, I don't have no money. He feels hurt. Yeah. You may genuinely not have any money because you've spent it, but he's mm -hmm. not aware. Yeah. He feels hurt. That's already causing a rift mm -hmm. right there. So... Every family needs to talk about finances. Mm -hmm. Not talking about it in a way that will break the family down, mm -hmm. but talking about it in a way that we will empower each other. Mm -hmm. We would grow the family. Mm -hmm. We would be conscious of our responsibilities towards each other, yeah. towards our children, mm -hmm. and towards our extended families. Mm -hmm. we, we cannot take that part away from us. We are Africans. We have extended family. It's not going anywhere anytime <laughs> That's soon. That's right. But we need to be able to handle them in such a way that it doesn't break down our own unions. Mm -hmm. Personally, uh, you know, that's what I think. But on a lighter note, <laughs> mamoni na mamoni, yamoni na family. I think you know what she is. What she's saying is. Hello? Okay, uh, before we take you, Renee, someone on the line. Hello, good afternoon, sir. What's your name and what's your contribution to the show? You're welcome. Hello? Oh, I think we lost that caller. It's unfortunate. But please feel free to call uh, back and tell us. So give us your contribution. We'd love to hear from you. Yes, Ronald, you were going to say something. Yes, yes, uh, she's right. The, <laughs> the principal responsibility to provide for the house. <laughs> okay. So men must understand that. Hello? All right, I think we have that caller back. Uh, hello, good afternoon, sir. Hello? Hello, good afternoon, I'm sir. I'm calling from Drama. Okay. Hello? What would you like to add to the show this afternoon? I'm calling from, I'm calling from Dara. Okay, we are listening to you, sir. Yeah, I thank you very much for your advice there. Okay. But to want to talk about marriage, about sex, all that thing. I want to talk about God before people talk about all things. Okay. Before you marry to that you are a woman in a house, you know, you not go up to go to church. Oh, we, we seem to be having some yeah, difficulties yeah. with that caller there. It's unfortunate. Uh, no, lots of people are trying to call at the same time, so you might need to insist to be able to get through to us. Please insist. We'll really, really, really like to, uh, to hear from you. But I think he was saying it's important to talk about God, God in the marriage. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's like the very base. Like we said, he's the genesis. <laughs> he's the yeah. author of it. <laughs> okay. okay. We, I think we have another caller. Hello? He's still. Hello? Okay, uh, we're going to continue while uh, hoping that uh, he will be able to call us back. Ronald, you're going to say something. Yes, but I was saying that in principle, normally the man is responsible primarily mm -hmm. for providing for the family. In principle, again, any other revenue generated by other members of the family should <laughs> fall under the jurisdiction of the man. <laughs> it's true. In principle, normally. Okay. In principle, but our wives are adults, mm -hmm. so we should let them manage their resources. We should let them support the family willingly. Mm -hmm. Okay. I say this because sometimes some men may want to coerce their wives into bringing in their revenue. Mm -hmm. Some men may even want to sit on the entire revenue. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not good. The, 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 the woman too works, she sweats for this money, so yeah. let her willingly share the money with you and also use it for the good of the family while using it for other personal personal expenses. Okay. All right. Very well said. Now, uh, uh, <laughs> to you, Martha. I, I, I said it. Yes, the, the women's lawyer. He's, oh, he, oh, he's just being no, real. Uh, yeah. no, that's, that's, that's good. <laughs> what I want to say is that when there is financial freedom, there is peace in, that, in, in the home. Mm -hmm. The truth is that women, there are some things we buy. Little things which are, at the end of the day, they are really expensive. Okay, let me say, my, my kids are on holidays with my younger sister still in your own day, even though they come for a weekend. <laughs> so some days back, they called and said, Mommy, please, we need milk. We need our conflicts. And what did they say? Chocolate. So the three things. I had to buy and send to them mm -hmm. before even my husband could come back from work. But 
I, 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 the person I sent, I gave him 10,000 francs. I think he came back with 800. I was like, is this all my money? Mm -hmm. You know, is this all what is left? I want to say that we, may, we spend a lot too at home. Now, those things are very small. They are minor. But, but at the end of yeah. the day, yeah. you realize yeah. that they add up. Mm -hmm. Personally, what I do is that... I'm, okay, we have another caller. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, madam. Uh, what's your name and what would you like to add to the show today? <coughs> yes, my name is Ngolen Jikan, calling from Yaoundé. You're welcome. Yeah, in a marriage, I think communication is the principal thing. If you don't communicate, it means your marriage will be scattered anytime soon. <laughs> Okay, all right. I think we lost, uh, we lost, or maybe that's what he wanted to say. That's just all he wanted to say. And, and I agree. And that's true. I might not be married, but I do know that communication, communication. is very, very important. important. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. there are three key things I always say there is communication, there is finance, and there is sex. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he got a point there. <laughs> okay. Yes. Now, um, whether it's uh, communication, whether it's finance, it's intimacy, it's the children, or uh, love and attention, at some point, couples have to find a balance, I like to, uh, I like to believe. Now, how do you find a balance when there is a problem? That is, when there's an issue in an area, it could be any of the above mentioned or something we haven't even talked about. How do you find a balance when you, when you notice that, okay, there is an issue here? How do you strike a balance i mean uh, between uh, a couple's run out let me start with you okay how you strike a balance when you notice that there's an issue yes um, again communication because uh, marriage is all about agreement mm -hmm. agreement it's a union of two independent persons who agree to come together mm -hmm. so it's about putting issues on the tables issues on the table and then agreeing on what solution the family will follow best. Yeah. No one person is there to solve issues in a marriage. Mm -hmm. All the solutions must come from the two partners, okay. the husbands and the wife, whether there are issues relating to the children, whether there are issues relating to money mm -hmm. and things like that. But it's also possible that sometimes realistically we cannot agree. Yeah. It's possible <laughs> that sometimes we discuss and we just cannot agree on the issues. <laughs> in this situation, the man must make the decision. All right. And He's the head of the family. And whatever consequence <laughs> yeah. that his decision will bring. Mm -hmm. Now, what we need to understand here is that it really doesn't matter whether you're taking a suggestion from your wife or not you are deciding. The man mm -hmm. makes all the decisions in the family. Yeah. All he does is draw the inspiration from other family members, particularly his wife. Mm -hmm. So even if you sit and your wife says, okay, our child will go to Sase. And you say, okay, no problem, it's fine by me. It means the man has decided to send the child away. <laughs> yeah. So when something goes wrong now, you will not say, okay, you it's, it's, it my, it's my wife who <laughs> said that. <laughs> no. The wife that you gave me. And so, <laughs> the wife, no. so you have the final decision on all issues. So mm -hmm. all you have to do is when there are issues, sit with your wife, mm -hmm. see where you can have common ground, yeah. and then take the decision that will satisfy the two of you. Okay. But when you just cannot agree, you have to go ahead and make the decision. All right, and and Mr. Bu? I will add. I will just add intimacy to communication. Uh -huh. That he, when you are together and mm -hmm. you dialogue together, yeah, you always have common grounds on issues that are, that that may come up in the family. Mm -hmm. so, All right. So it's just like negotiations. It's give and take. Yeah. The two parties must always be willing to give up something so that peace should reign. All right. Like that always be willing to give. The wife should be willing to give up something. The husband should be willing to give up something. Sometimes solving issues in marriage means letting go. Mm -hmm. I may be right. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm it's okay. Absolutely it's not my correct. Fault. Yes, yeah. but I know I am right. I'm right. even convinced. Mm -hmm. But that may just be my thought. Yeah. I may just be misguided. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's, it's important to let go. All right. Now, on, on the issue of problem solving, um, I've heard, sometimes even seen couples, or the people, uh, married people, who take their issues out. Uh, they go to their parents, they go to their friends with these issues. You're having a problem of intimacy with your husband, and Nick is talking about it with your girlfriends. Uh, as a wife, what would you have to say about that, Sally? Um, talking about your family issues with girlfriends, it's, uh, for lack of a better word, wrong. I don't think they're going to offer you much of a solution. Mm -hmm. Personally, I would suggest three things. The first thing, you talk to your God. Mm -hmm. The second thing, you talk to the person concerned. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't work, get a professional. I insist, professional help. 
There are marriage counselors, there are sex counselors, we have finance counselors, we have communication counselors, mm -hmm. we have all kinds of people out there who can help you. Please do not go to your pastor, do not go to your priest and so on, except you know that they have the training to help you. Are you okay. understanding? All right. We have someone on the line. Sorry to cut in there. Hello. Good afternoon, madam. Yeah, I'm here from Kumu. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, what would you like to add to the show this afternoon? Okay, my problem is what if you have a husband that you, you the woman, puts in much money? Okay. Yes, and then the little that the husband brings, he is, he puts his eyes into his own money. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Okay. All right. Thank you very much for that question, madam. We're going to try to see if we can answer that before we continue. Um, <laughs> Martha, <laughs> I think they made it. you are the marriage <laughs> coach. <laughs> you are the marriage coach. <laughs> In that situation, you know, like, 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 what would you advise? Like we said earlier, character is a very strong thing. You know, when your character, if you're a selfish person, marriage will not change you. Mm -hmm. You may become more selfish even yes. in marriage. <laughs> yes. If you're not a giver, marriage will not turn you to become a giver. Mm -hmm. So there is this thing. It depends on the man who he is as a person okay you know yes. who is as a person and also i believe in submission mm -hmm. i believe in transparency in marriage but i also believe that as a couple there are some strengths that you as a husband you have that i as a wife i'm not strong in that area Absolutely. you know maybe i could be the one who knows how to keep money mm -hmm. but you are spendthrift you know we, we come to that adjustment so like, like the caller said if you realize that your husband is but me, I won't say keep your money from him, but I will say talk with him. Like she said, most often we take our problems out without talking to the person with whom we have the problem with. Mm -hmm. You know, talking with her, let me know how you feel. One day I was counseling a couple and then the woman brought up some issues. The man was surprised. The man said, you never I told me. Talk. I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. You know, so let's learn to talk. You know, mm -hmm. say it the way it is with love. Like I always say, know the when and the how. Mm -hmm. When to say it and how to say it. Yeah. You know, so maybe she should talk with her husband. Okay. Talk with her husband about it. All right. Please, darling, I've realized that I have a hundred francs. You have just ten francs. And you won't allow me maybe run the money, uh, the home the way we want to do it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're cheap. But no, they should, they should communicate. I okay. think so. Any other ideas on how she can go about it? I just wanted to add that marriage is a school. Mm -hmm. And you learn a lot inside. Mm -hmm. And if what this uh, lady has just uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, brought up is persisting in a home, then, then the marriage was not really built on a solid foundation, I should say. Mm -hmm. And I think they missed out something because they were supposed to agree, like he mentioned before. They mm -hmm. had to talk about situations like that. Mm -hmm. They talk about money, the finances of the family. Yeah. Otherwise, when somebody is already doing that to an extent that a woman is voicing it out then yeah. there is something that they were supposed to start from that they never did talking okay. about starting from sorry to cut you short i want to encourage the the single ladies and the guys out there mm -hmm. please have a mentor have yes. someone oh. that you can talk to <laughs> at the beginning <laughs> yesterday somebody called me all the way from canada the person was really venting my wife is this my wife is that my first question was who do you submit to you the man who, who are you accountable to? Yes. It's not like you have a whip, the person beats you, but for those of us who are getting into courtship, don't not get um, into courtship with a rascal, I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> the man who is all manly by himself, he listens to no one, because you may need that mentor during the rainy season yes, <laughs> he's going to bring the umbrella yes absolutely <laughs> yes. so so i want to say i think that's a key advice to 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 our young people out please have have someone that can talk to both of you mm -hmm. someone that your fiance respects that you two can run to you know before even mm -hmm. you get married and then Take time to build your relationship. I mm -hmm. think that's another issue. You know, we're in a fast world where we have the fast food, the fast everything. And sometimes we don't take time to build our relationship. Yeah. I'm, I'm not saying that you cannot meet somebody today and get married tomorrow. It can happen. But please be careful. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Be careful about it. And okay. just to add to that, True. a relationship again is a bank account. Mm -hmm. You can only withdraw what you've deposited. Absolutely. That's right. So if you haven't built well, that marriage, right. you do not expect it to work. Yeah. You mm -hmm. have to put in something to get something. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, okay, and where else? Um, sometimes women do not uh, reveal their feelings. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, women act more mm -hmm. than talk. So, you just find that she's too quiet. <laughs> or you find that uh, you annoy her. Mm -hmm. Things like that. But she has something really boiling up inside. So, those things should just be discussed. Mm -hmm. And man of approach matters. Mm -hmm. So, you just have to sit your husband down mm -hmm. and say, This is the, our combined income. 
yeah. is our combined income. Let's decide exactly how much we use to run the home. Mm -hmm. Like she said, let's decide how much, what are the bills we are going to pay regularly? Mm -hmm. What are the other things? What we keep aside for miscellaneous? Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot mm -hmm. easier for her. The pressure her husband has on her may lessen okay. if okay. they come to an agreement on how they are going to use the combined income for the family. So she will not face that pressure. Hello. Okay. We have another caller. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, welcome. What's your name and what's your contribution? Good afternoon, madam. I'm John Kima Elvis. I'm calling from I'm from GMRC. Okay. Yes, precisely. All right. What would you like to contribute, sir? I want to give more contribution. Sure, you're welcome. Yeah, you have our attention. About the finance, about, about the financial <laughs> issue. Okay. I think she, she, I think as a man, her. you don't need to put really look into what your your wife. Your, your wife is uh, earning because okay. you start looking about what your wife will earn monthly, you start having problems. Okay. And secondly, if you have if you have issues with your with your with your wife, the highest person you need to look to, to look up to is God. Because you cannot trust anybody that you, you will go to meet maybe to explain your problem. Or whatsoever. So the only person that you can trust is God. Uh, for me, I think so. Thank you. Okay, thank you too very, very much sir, for calling. We are grateful and uh, we love your contribution. I hope you're going to have an excellent weekend. That was a good <laughs> point, Ronald. I think he was just um, agreeing with everything you've been saying on yeah. the matter of finance. and Women, women are adults and mm -hmm. they should manage their resources. Okay, there there, there is one thing he okay. pointed out there mm -hmm. that uh, uh, Madame talked about which really caught my attention, getting a mentor, mm -hmm. we, we, th we can fall in very wrong hands. And <laughs> like he is saying, people, you have selfish people out there, they always, always they're ready to take advantage over mm -hmm. every bit of uh, complaint that you bring up. Okay. So in that situation, That's we need to... That's the mentor comes in before marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before mm -hmm. marriage. The okay. mentor comes in before marriage. Mm -hmm. Because right. before marriage, the picture is not yet clear. So yes. he knows you guys. He knows that, okay, Peter loves outing. Martha loves sleeping at home. You know, he knows you guys. Mm -hmm. But like she said, eh, you should get a professional. But I'm just saying that in a world where you think you need that covering. Because some men will tell you, I'm not answerable to anybody. Yes. You, can't, you can't talk sure. to anyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have situations like that. And, and we have men like that. Okay. And another thing I want to say that I want to encourage <coughs> couples to do is to quit. Okay. I think we have another person on the what line. Hello. What about? Hello. Yes, ma. Good afternoon. Thank you. Yes. What's your name, and what is your contribution? My name is Justine. Okay. Yeah, call her from Amanda. All right, great. Tell me, wait till where you want to talk for the program. Yes, I want to ask that thing. Mm -hmm. If you want to give it, provide the map, it provides the house. Mm -hmm. Then the map, you can give it, you can come tell you what she's doing. Then you have to do a good breakfast. You can give it to family. In the dinner income of family, the way I'm saying breakfast, I'm telling you, you're to give good breakfast. You will tell you, choose chocolate or chocolate. You know, I chop any kind of thing. You might will do it here. Okay. Yeah, All right. That's a very good question. Thank you very much, Emma. Thank you very much. We'll try to answer that question. Um, Sally, please. I see Justine from Bamenda. I would go in Pigeon because I realized you spoke in Pigeon. Yes, please. I see Justine. Now, the thing where my sister Mata be just the talk now, he say every man gets some person where the fear. Him. If you know that person where your master the fear, or where that man the fear, where the respect the person, go report it for that person. May put one or two for down, may one or talk her. Because if you want to be so way, sometimes he the frustrated and say, you know, the work. Or sometimes as some other thing, he the turn and the put on for your skin. So if I say, may you find person, may I eat talker. If, if you don't get person, she don't demand you say, for down you and you, you say, see, this thing where you do so, you know, fine. Picking the no go, go school, picking the no go chop and this and that. So find person where you and, you and uh, the man who not the fear them, who not the respect them. 
Oh, now if you go talk with the person for see whether if you arrange on a matter. And, Correct. And, and, and see, no kill yourself. No, no kill yourself. Cook. Which you feel cook out of love, mm -hmm. you know, no, no borrow yes. for one place the man where you know the work, you know, cook which you feel cook and put out for fine pan and serve the man. Once in a while, you feel decide, so okay, may you make maybe a chew, eat like a with beef, with coconuts, with pepper, you give, the way you know fit, give the turning cocoa with love. Make it no because you get other priorities, you want help, picking them for go school, mm -hmm. you want help other family, team them. So when they were with respect where you will talk and I think say go also yeah. Mm. They will right. also advise the men to start to keep up. Yes, <laughs> no really. <laughs> really. Because uh, what she said is really yeah, pretty. How does a man feel does a husband feel that you still stay at home, you don't work and you're what? making demands on your wife? It's with becoming more and more that's, that's, that's yeah, a man of becoming real more irresponsibility. And more yeah. Yeah. Yes, irresponsibility. No, it's becoming more and more, more rampant. And, more, I'm telling and you. that's why the need for mentors is on the rise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We need mentors. We yeah. need people to stand up and say, look, I can help. I mm -hmm. don't need to know the couple, but okay. I can help. Another caller. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. What's your name and what's your contribution? We need some from your Okay. What would you like to add, sir? Yeah, what I want to say is, If you study your Bible in Genesis chapter 2 and Genesis chapter 3, it will tell you about marriage and how God created man and woman. Okay. When God created man, he said, I will make a help to the man. And the help that he was talking about, God was talking about was the woman. So when God said, I will make a help, is not just a help to give birth to children. So God was talking about help of help, to bring everything out, to help your husband in finances, to help your husband even when the difficult is. Mm -hmm. So what women are doing now is that as the man is the head of the family, the man is supposed to do everything which is not correct. And the second thing that I want to say is, if you read your Bible also from the book of Titus chapter 2, it will tell you that the beauty of a woman lies in the submission. Mm -hmm. When a woman does not submit the husband, even if she is beautiful, anyhow, she will not be beautiful to the husband. So she may be beautiful outside to other men, but today in the house she is not beautiful to the husband. Okay. So the beauty of a woman in a marriage relationship lies in her submission. All right. Then to my own idea, I think the best person to to give your pro to your problem is the priest or the pastor. All right. I think these are men of God, and when they can solve your problem, you will feel it. And if the Holy Spirit, you will really bless your marriage, and you can also ask the priest to pray for your marriage. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, sir, for that contribution. Oh, I wish we had time to react to that, but unfortunately, we ran out of time. I'm thinking maybe we should do a part two of this show. I, 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 absolutely. There's so much. We couldn't talk about everything I had planned. There's so much. But very quickly, now we only have a minute. Very quickly, uh, uh, what would you say as married persons? You, you've been there for years. You've experienced it. What advice would you give people who are contemplating getting into, mar uh, uh, in, into marriage? What's the realistic view of marriage that they should have? Just in a few words. Let me start with you right now. Okay. I will say that those who are contemplating marriage should expect the unexpected. Okay. And therefore, they should only choose a partner that is teachable, mm -hmm. that is malleable. Okay. Somebody who is willing to learn, somebody who is willing to bend when the situations change, mm -hmm. and somebody who is willing to listen and support the marriage irrespective of the outcome. Okay. And Sally? Um, I would say marry your best friend. Because life happens, but you should marry someone with whom you can look back and laugh and say, oh my God, see what happened. Mm -hmm. Marry someone whom when things are not going right, you can share a bottle of beer at night and say, hey, babes, we don't even have a level for one man. <laughs> you know, marry someone with whom you can sit down when there's no one around and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. It's not all the time daddy or you in the room and him in the sitting room. Sit down and just talk about life. Just mm -hmm. talk about things, how's work, how's all of that. Again, marry your best friend. Okay. If you can find a best friend. If not, marry your friend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is the book? Okay. What, what I would like to say is uh, 
there is no marriage without problems. Mm -hmm. And if you think that because of the problems in the marriage, you will be thinking of running out of it, it means you went in there immature. So prepare your mind well. Know what you are going in for because mm -hmm. you are going in to remain there. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. <laughs> is it do or die? <laughs> and uh, Martha, let's I'm end with you. I'm going to say marriage is a very beautiful thing, but work on <clears> yourself. <throat> I think that's what I'm going to say for my young ladies who are out there. Work on yourself. What are the qualities you want to see in that man? Work on yourself. You can only give what you have. Yes. <laughs> the wow, what a show we've had today. It's been amazing. I've learned so much and I'm sure you too I have learned. Thank you so much for being with us. Remember to join us again next week, Saturday, same time for another show. Have an excellent, excellent weekend. Bye-bye. TV, votre télé.